Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. It's another paid request. It's time for Manuel. Thank you so much for that. And for those interesting requests, you can request any type of tier list, review, re review, randomness, commentary, react, what have you. Feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal, which is usually the best bet, or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for Puss in Boots 2, The Last Wish from 2022. Which I had never seen, because to be honest, I never saw the first Puss in Boots. I remember him a little bit from Shrek 2, voiced by Antonio Banderas. But yeah, I had not seen the first Puss in Boots, so I didn't see the second one. But, there's a nice welcome surprise, I gotta say. This was actually fairly good. A lot more serious than I thought it would be. A lot more adult than I thought it would be. Meaning, there's some jokes that... A little bit as in like attempt at swearing but they hide with bleeps or someone's like bullshit one of those type of things also the main plot is Antonio Banderas' character who's been very successful as being this fearless warrior you have a great opening sequence where he's helping these people Fights his governor, gives money to the crowd, uses fireworks to fight the governor and his men. Very dynamic animation, swirling of the camera. Uh, then this giant awakens, but he's able to fight it, and we show his strength and his. Uh, you know, showcase why he's so beloved, why he's become such a legend, with the way he takes on this this uh, fucking giant using stuff to fly through the air and even gets his little sword under the finger as he puts it the spider splinter making the giant hit his own bell very like I said dynamic animation which it's not done in the style of spider-man into the spider-verse but there are moments where people are running that seem like the same back, not something about that reminded me of it. Like the animation is done, did not like that. But when people are running, I don't know, it's like certain streets or certain things they put in there to make it have that Spider Verse style in those running sequences. I, I don't know what the specifics are because I'm not knowledgeable on that, but I like it. it brought a sense of fun, excitement to it. I rather enjoyed it. And one that leads to another, he succeeds, but then after successful venture, the bell falls on him, and he comes to realize he's had his eight deaths. And they even go through a montage of what led up to the eight deaths, whether it be a weight bench or something else crushing him. And then the good chunk... It's not a good chunk of, of the plot, but the thrust of the plot is this wolf who you think is a bounty hunter with these two, I forget what weapons they're called, dagger type of weapons, has this very creepy whistle. Sounds like a whistle I would see, or hear I should say, at like a Italian western. And I like the design of the wolf. Again, the whistle was very creepy, and it gave a very menacing aura. And you come to find out that's actually Death himself, which apparently he's pissed that this cat, this was you know puss and boozes his cat, and wastes his eight lives. And he's like, you know what? I'm not a nice guy. I'm going to collect the the last one myself. Now granted, some of his motivation is still a bit confusing because he talks about like, you wasted your life. I'm like, did he really though? Like, of these eight lives, I mean, he rescued people, he saved people, he made people happier, he became a legend, he had all these adventures. That's more than most people have done in their lives. So wouldn't there be like a million other people that you feel wasted their lives more than Puss in Boots? Because he keeps saying he wastes his lives. I'm like, what about all these adventures and being a legend and saving people? And the beginning itself is more than what most people do their entire lives. So 
shouldn't you go be going after them for them wasting their lives? But okay, I just chalked it up to he's a he's a asshole, he's a villain, he's bored and he's pissed that Puss in Boots laughs at the face of danger, so he's just pissed off about that. I go more towards that motivation, not that he wasted his life thing. But, and like I said, it brings a bit of seriousness to it. Where during the, the first fight, now is the first time Puss in Boots is scared. The hair is rising from his fur. He can't fight as well. He's not as cavalier with it. And he's even like, he gets a close call and a little bit of blood trickles down. And he touches it, it's on his paws. I'm like, okay, well, I didn't expect, you know, <laughs> to have blood in this movie. I think that's the only time you see it, but still, more than I thought, with this villain, with this menacing, creepy whistle, I pretty much, he scared to death, he retires being the legend, which pretty much, it's Zoro, but as a cat, goes to this cat rescue and I like the idea that they have a Spanish version of this is the end my friend the end but Spanish and just shows how he becomes more and more used to being this cat rescue having to use the litter box growing a beard on his fur all this stuff meets his little dog who is very much of optimistic and I was a bit un I wasn't sure about this character at first because he seemed like to be a character that would go really, really annoying. But overall, I didn't feel that way about him. Yeah, he's very optimistic, very happy go lucky. But thankfully, like I said, I don't think they really made it him obnoxious or irritating. Now, the other part of the plot is that he hides from, in the cat rescue, he, well, he doesn't need to hide, they just don't think it's him because he's, you know, his looks has changed. But Goldilocks and the Three Bears are a crime family, and they want, they wanted Puss in Boots to steal this map to find the Wishing Star. And the Wishing Star will give you anybody one wish. So, of course, Puss in Boots wants to get to this because he wants to wish for more lives. Another nine lives. Ultimately, you find out Goldilocks wants this because she wants to find out who her real family, her biological family is, and get back to them. The other bears don't know this yet. They think probably it's riches or whatever the case may be. And then while Puss in Boots is trying to steal the map, he comes upon Sema Hayek, who is another cat. Which I haven't seen the first Puss in Boots, so I don't know if she's in that movie. But of course I did. Antonio Banderas Sema Hayek from uh, Desperado. So it's kind of cool to have a little Desperado reunion. Or Once Upon a Time in, New, in, uh, in Mexico. Yeah, once time, once upon a time in New Mexico. That's the prequel. But yeah, it's kind of nice to see this Desperado reunion between the two. I mean, I don't know if she was in the first one. If that's the case, makes me wonder if at first they wanted Captain Zeta Jones to have that Zorro, more of that motif. But yeah, I guess quite have Sema Hayek, which I didn't recognize her voice at first because she sounded deeper. Maybe because she's older. But her voice sounded deeper than I was used to. But now that I think about it, I don't... The last time I saw Selma High was probably that Everly movie. And that was... I can't remember when that movie was. It was quite a while ago. So... Which I do like that movie. So the two of them work together with this little dog and through them they steal the map. They are on their journey. The wishing star is in this dark forest. Also the the other 
main antagonist is Jack Horner, which I swear to God, I thought it was Nathan Lane voicing him from the Birdcage. It's not. I think it's like John Muhani. But I swear to God, at first I thought it was Nathan Lane. And pretty much his wish is he wants to control magic because he's collected all this magic stuff, including baby unicorn horns and again, some little like dark shit here and there for this movie. And like I said, Antonio Banderas, what's sad, he has more to do here and has is better than he was in Indiana Jones 5. And that's sad. In fact, the past couple of times he's been in a live action film, like this film treated him better as an actor than those movies. Because he has a motivation, he has a character development where throughout this journey he keeps being cautious of death, or he'll hear that creepy whistle and be scared and run, and at one point even has a panic attack. So it was nice to see again this bit of underlying seriousness of like himself. He took he should have appreciated his life more. He wished he had lived his lives a little bit differently. It was refreshing to see that. Not something I expected. And the idea like Jack Horner as the villain didn't mind. Kind of like the idea that he was the lame fairy tale, which is understandable because the low Jack Horner sat in the corner in his pie. There's no idea. There's really nothing to that. Thumb pie, thumb up your ass. No wonder people were more interested in Pinocchio as you see in a flashback. <clears throat> I do like that he has his baker dozen, and they're just complete. He just uses them willy-nilly and doesn't care if they die or not. And there's even... I think like Jiminy Cricket trying to... Speaking like Jimmy Stewart. I mean, okay, that's a choice. The Jimmy Trip, I guess Jimmy Stewart, Jiminy Trip, Cricket, I guess. Sure. But he don't lie, Jimmy... I, I can't do Jimmy Stewart. James Stewart, whatever. <clears throat> Just become more and more horrified with what <laughs> Lil Jack Hor Bid Jack Horror and I was doing. And there's other ideas I enjoy too. I enjoy that when you get to the Dark Forest, whoever holds the map, it goes into your mindset. So whoever gets the map, the whole landscape changes based on your fears or your problem, your issues, whatever the case may be. I, mean, I thought that was a neat idea to keep the variety of the environment changing up throughout the course, but yet still be on the same journey. And like I said, sometimes the dialogue would get a bit adult. Uh, for example, like the, the little dog is being very optimistic about what happened. What name What name do you want? What names have you been called? He's like, this, this. He even says shit for brains, but they bleep out the, the shit. Shit for brains. And the, the terrors are horrified. I'm like, okay, well. Same with when the puppy has the map. It turns to all these nice flowers. And we well, gotta smell the flowers. And Selma Hayek goes, all I smell is bullshit. <laughs> Basically, all I smell is bullshit. Oh, uh, yeah, I just, it's just something I didn't expect. And you know what? That makes it a bit funnier than just a fart joke. Or a piss joke. Or whatever. Sex joke. I don't know that stuff with the the verb it, like that. I don't know for some reason. For me, maybe that's more my kind of humor. That's more my cup of tea in terms of if you're trying to push adult humor. Ah, oh, that stuff kind of makes it funnier to me. Uh, it's just a matter of taste. What you're into, what makes you laugh more. You know, by the end, like, uh, the actress sequence is a bit dynamic. Of course, after the first bit, it does suck, though, that 
Puss in Boots doesn't really get a lot to do action-wise until the end of the film. It's more Selma Hayek. But at least it made sense in the plot because at this point he's more scared. He's not as gun ho to do a fight. As part of the character arc, it's like he's scared because he, if one false move he'll die and this is, it's his last life. So again, at least there's a motivation, at least there's a story, at least there's a point behind that. Instead of others that just are there to emasculate the male just because. So, yeah, I, I can at least appreciate that they put that into the... Having a reason for it. I said the animation, I think, is fairly good. The... I mean, some of the dark stuff. Like when the Jack, when Jack Horner and his men get to the f place... A flower grabs a guy, pulls it out, and it's just a bunch of fucking bones. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Is the first put is the first puss in boots this violent and language of, if so, if not, then I commend them for being a bit ballsy with this. And, I mean, at least I don't have many issues. One that I thought was a little bit, the end of the heavy spoilers at the end. There's a bit where I get what they're going for, but, like, we're supposed to be mad that he wants to wish to live and wish for more lives. I'm like, is that really a thing to be mad about? Like, no, nah, you shouldn't be wishing for more lives. I'm like, yeah. Wish for nine more lives and said, you know what? I'm going to take care of these nine lives a lot better than I did before. And with how much of an adventurer you are, how much of a guy you rescue people, how much of people you've saved, now that you want to be more serious, you want to appreciate life more, it would actually benefit the world and benefit a lot of people for you to survive longer and get those wishes. So yeah, do it. And then like he does tell Sema Hayek, and then Sema Hayek is like, you're selfish? Like, what, he's, he, people are mad that he wants to live? Selfish that he wants his fuck, he wants lives? <laughs> well, I wanted someone I could trust. I thought it was you. Yeah, the, the God forbid the guy wants some more lives, wants to live. Like, what's wrong with that? I mean, I would have been happier if it was, yeah, he dies nine lives back, but he's going to, he can still appreciate his lives more. at the end he's like no give it to you and I'm like okay so her wish is she wants to trust somebody your wish is to have nine lives so you don't fucking die trust somebody don't die trust somebody don't die hmm I wonder which of these is more important which is the more selfish person I think Selma Hyde is the more selfish fucking person and not Puss in Boots I don't want to die, but I need some of the trust. When well, you trust in the Lord, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Maybe Jesus won't come back and he'll be pissed. I... So that that kind of stuff bothered me a bit. Like, I deal with the going for is that, you know what? I have my last life. I'm going to live the best that I can. I know I can't cheat death. But I'm not going to be scared of you. And he does get a good fight with the wolf death. And really is able to come up as onto the wolf. I did like that scene. That was a very good, well choreographed, wonderfully animated fight. So I appreciate that. It's like this is where Pussy Boots gets his balls back. That was nice to see. And it was satisfying. And Antonio Banderas does a good job voicing the character. And, uh, Sally, the best Antonio Banderas film I've seen in a long fucking time. And that's sad. But, uh, it ends on a sweet note. Like, three of them together. 
the Dolly Lot to the Three Bear stuff, I'm kind of mundane on it, kind of meh. You know, the the Baby Bear and Goldilocks having arguments back and forth. Yeah, I've, I've kind of meh. Didn't love it, didn't hate it, kind of in the middle of it. Kind of like, was more interested in the wolf as death, the Puss in Boots stuff with some high. I was more interested in that stuff. Less so on the Goldilocks Three Bears. They're, they're there, but... I don't know. Parmy would have been fine if they weren't in it. Like, if they were not in it, I would not have missed them. So I didn't really... I'm indifferent. Completely indifferent on them. But anyway. And it ends with them going to, to far, far away land. I guess to go see Shrek in them. Because I don't know if there is going to be another Shrek film. There probably will be. I... I would almost guarantee there will be another Shrek film. I would bet money on it. I don't have my phone on, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if I found news that, yeah, they're making another Shrek movie. They probably will. They up more of that nostalgia. But overall, Puss in Boots 2, I did like it. I did over all, other than some nitpicks here and there, I liked that it, Told a bit more of a deeper story, a little bit more of an adult story. It's a really nice animation. Con you know, serious contemplation about life and death. So it made the, the states feel a bit more dire, a bit more strengthened because of that. And a little bit more worthwhile character motivation for Puss in Boots. Which is sad, that's more of a tear to... <laughs> that's sad. You know, I, I'm a big Ninja Turtle fan. I think of like the last couple stuff with Ninja Turtles. And this movie has more of a deeper story and character development than those last couple Ninja Turtle films combined. The Michael Bay produced stuff, this new one, and all the looks in it, I'm like... Why is it that it, it, it can't happen to the characters like, like Ninja Turtles I like, grew up with, but Puss in Boots got his moment to shine in the story. Go, you know, good for him. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.